so what we're looking at in our current unit, we're talking um, sort of geometry type stuff, transformations of objects and that kind of thing. So the first transformation that we're going to talk about is a translation. So a translation is one of the transformations. What does a transformation mean to you? What does that word mean? Change. So we're talking about a change. A change in a shape. Now, with, our, with maths, we don't just... Change of the shape doesn't mean, ironically, that the shape changes. Because a shape is not just a shape, it's a shape and a position. All right? So when we say a, we're going to transform a shape using a translation, um, we're not changing the language. We're translating by moving it. So a translation okay, is a movement. Right, are you seeing the link between what we were just doing? So with those vectors, you were moving the cop, the dot, uh, around the, the board, weren't you? And you could move it up or down, left or right. Combinations of up or down, left or right gave you diagonal movement. You could move to any point on the grid, right? We all saw that. Um, relative to where you started from. So when we say translation, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a movement and how far do we move. And we need to be able to apply it and describe it fully. So those are the two things. So the application of a translation is, is quite easy, all right? But people do make mistakes. So if I said to you, I'm going to call this A, B, C. Like I said, you won't have drawn it yet. I don't want you to draw it yet because wait to see what we do, and then you have the space. So if I said to you, translate triangle a, B, C by vector 6, negative 2. Yeah, so you, you now know, don't you, straight away. All right? So that means that triangle is going to move 6 across in the X direction and 2 down in the Y direction. Now, quite often what we talk about when we first do uh, translations, we just say, oh, we move one unit to the right or one, and that's how we write it. But I've gone a step further with you guys because I know you can cope with it. We're going straight to vector notation because you can cope. It's fine. All right. It's not hard. I don't know why we bother doing it any other way, to be honest. But, uh, but as long as we know the numbers are the X one on top and the Y below. It's a bit different for coordinates, right? Because that's x and y left and right. How then would I apply my translation of this triangle? I should put an L in there. Surprised Jack didn't tell me I'd spell that way. Oh. Normally he picks me up on good things. But... Uh, translate triangle ABC by vector 6, negative 2. How do we do it then? Hey. Eh? He wasn't paying attention. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, he's, he's drifted. All right. Go on. Good, I like it. Yeah. Pick a point. So I'm going to pick one point. I pick three. All right. And then where does B go to? So we go across one. Two, three, four, five, and six. And we go down two. So this is where we will see, uh, so currently the M5s are working on just vectors in terms of vector geometry. So this is then what happens is called the resultant vector, and this is the result of the movement. So point B will end up here. So that's my new B, and I label it as B with a little dash, all right? And this is B dash is called the 
image of B. All right. Now, of course, all the other points follow suit. So I don't actually need to do the rest because the triangle doesn't change. So I can add my points just like it was before. And there is my new triangle. This point is labeled A dash. This is C dash. So this is the image of the triangle. And this is the what we call the object. So the object and the image. And that's a translation. Okay. So that's applying it. Now, if you see two triangles and you're asked what the translation is, you just have to say translation and give the vector. Pretty simple, right? Very simple. So if I, so do you want to draw that out, make your notes? And then in the book, uh, so in your textbook, all right, so we've got some questions. Not long, so we're on page. Page 264. Right, and you've got practice one. Now, there is one thing I have to say. A little warning. Don't just count squares right although all the questions that you've got at the moment it's just about counting squares right but maybe so i could say sometimes the object is drawn with a set of axes rather than just on square paper. Why might that change it? Well, for instance, if um, it's six negative two, that means it moves right how far? Six, but what if two squares is worth one? How many squares would you have to move? If, if two squares counts as one unit, how if two squares counts as one unit, how many squares would I need to move if it's six? Twelve squares. So when there are no numbers, you're right to count squares, guys. Right? When, when there are no numbers, you can just count squares. But be careful if they ever chuck a grid in there. So, you know, you've got coordinates and things. Make sure that you pay attention to where the, how the grid is labelled, what the scale is. Now. Because it is, we can also describe this as we go six units... Right would be that six, and we go two units. Sorry, not left, yeah, down. I was just thinking left and right then. Two units down, you were paying attention. All right, two units down. Now, those units rely on they're either squares or they're numbers on the number line. All right, so be aware, just that's a, a little note for you to take into consideration. So, that's one page. 264, 265, you should be able to rattle through them and we can move on to the next one because it's super easy. All right. Um, if you think it's too easy to start with, uh, you can go on to question four over the page on 266 when we start in including a bit of algebra. Sorry, Desmond, I, I hadn't finished and you're uh, talking over me on the video. Uh, okay, let you get on. So, uh, just to remind you, I think uh, after we've copped, you've got this. So, on our thing, all right, 
this is the teams. If after the Easter break we don't come back, this is where we'll, we'll I'll post what work I expect for you to do. I have already put here, look, for you to sign up for a couple of things, okay, uh, that I can use. And I can track who does what with those two websites as well, all right? And the other thing is um, to say that, the, just to remind you, I know I keep saying it, but I'm, I'm deadly serious, the deadline for the test nation is Friday, all right? So those of you that are here to hand it in, that's fine. If you're not here, I still expect a completed piece of work that you can take a photograph of, that's fine, a good quality photograph that shows the whole piece of work, and then I will happily then take that in when you come back, but I will assess from the photograph. If I don't get a photograph or I don't get a piece of work, you will get a zero, and that's it, all right? And that is counting as an assessment grade, because right? school is as normal. You guys are all here, so school is as normal till Friday. Yes. Um, the photograph of the team captain is the Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So actually, maybe you could take two photographs, one a close-up of your template so I can see how it was made, and then one is your artwork. And then don't lose your artwork, because I would still like to put it on the wall eventually. So, all right? Okay.